Stealth Watch Cloud can be used to detect against threats that are targeting Kubernetes clusters. And to jump right into things, you'll see that what I've got here is a two node Kubernetes cluster that is sitting inside the Google Kubernetes engine, also known as GKE. And if you take a look at the actual cluster itself, you'll see that I have got a Struts2 service deployed on it. And this is running Apache Struts2. Uh, we've got one of two pods. So it's a two node, uh, two pod cluster that we've got actually uh, deployed inside this Kubernetes environment. And I do have it exposed to the internet. Uh, it's slightly obfuscated on port 9999, which is doing a redirect to port 8080 on TCP. But uh, nonetheless, it is actually exposed to the internet. And this Apache Struts 2 pod is running a vulnerable version of Apache Struts that is very well known and was widely publicized a little over a year ago. And many organizations actually fell victim to this particular vulnerability when the zero day exploit was announced for it. So if I actually click into it here, you can see a little bit more information about the actual um, service itself, but you can see that we've got one running pod, one that's actually terminated right now, but it is online. And if I actually just click this here and pivot out, you'll see that uh, it is indeed exposed on the internet on port 9999. So this is uh, just straight in Chrome, I'm hitting it. So if I were an attacker, either by doing reconnaissance or if I somehow otherwise got uh, uh, became aware that this particular port was exposed on this particular server. I would see this. I would know that, you know what, this is running struts. Maybe I can try and exploit against it. Maybe it is running that uh, vulnerable version that I've mentioned. So what I could now do is try and exploit this. And as an attacker, I don't know if this is a full-blown web server or virtual machine somewhere. I don't even know that it's actually a Kubernetes cluster or anything like that. I just know that's something that I can try and exploit. Okay, so what I now have is an actual Python exploit that I'm going to run against this particular cluster. And I'm just gonna move this around a little bit and make it a little bit easier to see. And so I've got uh, my local machine that I'm going to run this exploit on, okay? And I've also got a couple uh, of instances out on the internet where I've got another virtual machine sitting out there acting as a secondary attacker box. Also uh, think of it as where I'm going to be staging some data and using a reverse shell. Okay, so if I actually show you what the exploit looks like here, uh, you can see it's a, I just run python exploit.py, which is the actual exploit file itself. And I can run a couple of things against this. So I'm now hitting that IP address on that port and I'm gonna say, who am I? Root, okay, so that's pretty telling. Okay, with this exploit, I now have root access to that web server, and I can do things like, you name my, minus A. Okay, Linux struts too, there you go. So you can see a little bit more information. If I wanted to dig deeper, I could actually do uh, a cat of the, Etsy OS dash release, and there you go, Debian Linux. Okay, so now I know that I can run things like app commands, app git update, app git install, and I've actually gone ahead and done that. Okay, I've installed uh, nmap as well as netcat. It's as easy as app git install. You can go ahead and toss in the dash y, install nmap which I've already done, as I mentioned. So I've now got nmap on this particular virtual machine. I can also install netcat. Netcat is a very popular tool for uh, attackers to actually do command and control as well as to push files out. So what I'm now going to do is I am going to actually establish a dedicated command and control channel, okay? And here's the command that I'm gonna to use to do that. All right, run the exploit, this IP address on that port, netcat, establish a shell at that IP address on port 1234, okay? And this is where this second machine comes into play, okay? This is a, just a compromised machine sitting out on the internet, 
and I'm going to tell it to listen using the same tool, Netcat, on port 1234. All right. And I'm now going to execute this command over here using the Python exploit. All right. Now I'm going to come back over here to the actual um, attacker jump box, and I'm going to type in, who am I? Root. Okay, well, I could very well be root on the CineOS virtual machine, right? Well, not if I do a uname dash a. Look at that. So what we now have, uh, we've moved from the just running Python exploit commands one at a time for my local workstation to now we have a dedicated command and control channel established on this uh, secondary jump box out on the internet. So now I can navigate the file system. I can uh, execute in-map scans, which I've already done. I'll show you what that looks like here shortly. Uh, I can even uh, simulate piping a file out to the internet. So if I wanted to, let's just say, uh, that command right there, cat one gig dot zip, uh, pipe it out to Netcat on a remote IP on 12345. I've got a secondary shell open, open over here where I can tell it to listen on 12345. So I now have a command and control channel on 1234, and I'm going to use 12345 to actually send the data out as a data transfer channel, which I can do that right here by executing this command. So I'm just going to cat the file straight out to that IP address, to that remote workstation or jump box on port 12345. So this, I kind of went through this kind of fast, okay? But what I've demonstrated here is that I have got full access to this web server that happens to be a Kubernetes cluster. I could now try and use that reconnaissance that I did with Nmap to further infiltrate the cluster to stage data and then to ultimately exfiltrate that data or to steal the compute resources themselves. And here I'm actually just simulating the, uh, the data exfiltration component. So basically I've got, got access to this pod, this container, and ultimately if I persevered enough, the entire cluster. So you can see how this is a huge vulnerability to an organization uh, and how StealthWatch Cloud can, can, can provide visibility into this is we're actually monitoring this environment the entire time. So if I actually come back over to the Kubernetes engine itself and do a kube control git pods, you will see that on top of the struts pod, I've actually got several observable sensors, ONAs that we call them, that are StealthWatch cloud sensors that are on each one of these two nodes. And they're essentially sniffing all that traffic. 24-7, giving full visibility into everything moving in and out of the nodes as well as everything moving in and out of the cluster. So everything that I just showed you regarding that hack has actually been recorded. Stealth Watch Cloud is monitoring and looking for behaviors like this that would be indicators of compromise. So at this point in time, we're going to fast forward and we are going to go over into Stealth Watch Cloud. And in Stealth Watch Cloud, which is a, a SaaS-based solution that actually lives out in uh, the, the cloud itself, you can see that I have a bunch of different sensors coming into this uh, portal of mine, but I've got those two nodes that I just showed you, okay? Both of those nodes are reporting all the data about the nodes and the actual pods, as well as the actual internal Kubernetes services themselves. And what we're now going to take a look at is uh, the threat that I just demonstrated to you playing out inside StealthWatch Cloud. So if I actually come over here and we're just going to sort by lab user one, which I think is just who I have everything assigned over to for Kubernetes, you'll see that we've got several different alerts that triggered, okay? And they follow a threat life cycle, okay? You'll see here uh, this very first one, geographically unused remote access, okay? And this is against the actual, one of the exposed nodes itself. And this is where the moment it became live and was exposed, uh, we started detecting uh, remote access attempts. And this is the initial alert that triggered. We then triggered excessive access attempts, which would be things like uh, brute force login attempts. If I actually show you what this one looks like, you'll see uh, exactly what StealthWatch Cloud uncovered. And you can see where pretty much every single day we are showing you that remote IPs all over the internet are attempting to SSH in. Okay, and you can see how many failed attempts each one of them have right here. So an attacker is attempting to get in. That could have been very well have been me uh, doing reconnaissance with something like Nmap or another brute force login attempt on port 9999. 
even. Uh, this one's on SSH because it's also exposed uh, in the cluster. Uh, and then we've got persistent remote control connections. So this is a threat actually evolving to that next phase where it's got successful communication uh, bi-directionally with the endpoint. And at that point in time, you'll see that we now have internal port scanner that triggered. An internal port scanner is exactly what I mentioned. That was me running the in-map command from within this particular struts pod against the entire 10 dot uh, subnet here and that's being just saying what else is alive what else is breathing out there you can see that uh, we've got common port ranges as well as uh, web server targets common targets etc so it's, uh, it's full access all the way down to the individual flow level if you wanted to see uh, as far as supporting evidence that caused us to trigger and you can see where that particular pod is just hammering this particular IP address uh, on port after port after port after port looking for something else that's alive and breathing OK, uh, as the threat manifests, we can now see it move into uh, this one right here, new IP scanner. And this is going beyond just scanning one IP address on multiple ports, but this is it actually scanning those uh, that, that cluster of IPs, uh, which is actually going to be the ICMP scan that you can see right here against dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four, but you can see it incrementing. So there's us triggering on that uh, part of the threat playing out. Then we move into the actual data exfiltration itself. And you'll see that we've got two alarms here that are associated with that phase of the threat. Number one is going to be outbound traffic spike. And this is where StealthWatch Cloud is going to detect that that particular node or that particular pod is sending an exorbitant amount of traffic out to the internet on a suspicious host. And you can see right here, this is that IP address of that remote jump box that we actually established the command and control channel on as well as push the data out on port 1234 and 12345. You can see that some of the machine learning and anomaly detection was kicking in, uh, but you can see that uh, it's very easy for us to, to detect on that. And then we finally triggered an alert, um, an in internal connection blacklist hit. And this is where we are uh, letting you know that we've got tripwires set up that say that this particular node or this cluster, this pod should never reach out to the internet on unauthorized ports. So we've actually, uh, I set tripwires up in the system that alert on uh, movement to and from uh, this particular cluster out to the internet on port 1234 or 12345. And if I actually just type in here 1234 and 12345 that, and just change the timestamp, to pretty much all tip of today, you will see, and this is a real-time flow query in the system, where we were tracking the traffic on port 1234 and 12345 and triggered the alert. So uh, you can see multiple ways that Stealth Watch Cloud would have detected that threat. And then from an incident response standpoint, you can now come into Stealth Watch Cloud and do a full forensic investigation on this particular pod. And you can answer those questions, you know, did it just come online yesterday or today, which here's when it did. And then who did it talk to internally? Who did it talk to externally? Uh, you could continue the forensic investigation deeper into this pod, the node itself, as well as the, uh, the overall Kubernetes environment. So that concludes this demonstration of how StealthWatch Cloud can detect a threat against a Kubernetes cluster.